So tonight is our second lesson of our series, Pressure Points. I'm going to say Pressure Points. And this is the key text that we're focusing. So if you're taking notes, great job. And uh, the focus text that we're mentioning every week is Galatians 1.10. And this is the big idea behind this series when it comes to peer pressure for you as a teenager. Verse 10 says this, obviously... I'm not trying to win the approval of people. That is not my goal in life, is to win somebody else's approval, but of God. If my goal, if pleasing people were my goal, then I simply would not be Christ's servant. And that's the big picture. Our goal, no matter who you are, no matter where you go, and especially when it comes to peer pressure, no matter who you are around, your goal should be to win the approval of God. Last week, we talked a little bit about classifying peer pressure, understanding what peer pressure really is, how it affects you, how it affects teenagers, and we talked a little bit in depth about that. And we had a little bit of fun last week with this great bench vice press here. Um, we had a, Some of you guys had the opportunity to press and to destroy all types of random objects. And this bench vice here, it helped me just to illustrate something very important, that pressure, peer pressure in your life was going to reveal your character and your convictions. Peer pressure will reveal what you as a Christian are really made of. And finally, we talked about how peer pressure will show really if you care more about what people think about you or if you care more about what God thinks about you. And that is evident in those peer pressure moments. If you care more about what God thinks about you and then you trust in him, we closed last week talking about how God will see you through. He will be with you in the most pressure filled moments. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, I did not give this to media, but we read this last week, how we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed when we depend on God. And we are perplexed, but we are not driven into despair. Everybody say pressure points. So before we get into this lesson, uh, because we do have this press back, um, I think we can do a quick round two if anybody would like to. So did anybody bring anything? No, you, probably, you did bring something. Man, let's give it up for Preston. He's locked in. Come on down. What do we have, Preston? What did you bring for us today? Oh, uh, what did he get? He brought a Hot Wheel car. All right, we're going to give it a shot. All right. It is all you. We can have a, make a little bit of uh, crushing music, a little fill the yeah. environment here. <laughs> All right. And uh, any ladies who missed out last week, does any ladies want to come choose? You didn't get to do, participate last week, but you want to come choose something up here tonight to crush. Any ladies? All right. Come on down. What do we got? And is it withstanding the pressure? It's, it's a Jeep. <laughs> All right. So while he's doing that, we've got several things over here. Um, we do have this week um, exclusive. We have a can of 100% pure pumpkin that could shower the audience. Uh, we still have the birdhouse. Nobody chose that. We do have a uh, little pack of pineapple chunks. So um, dog bone, whatever. Choose whatever you like. What, what's happening over here? The pressure. Somebody was texting and driving. On 285. <laughs> so set a reminder in your phone. If you have something that's not flammable, combustible, you can bring it in next week and we'll let you crush it in the vice press, okay? <laughs> Maybe just straight up. All right, I think we're at the end of it. Let's see. Peer pressure. It shows you what you are made of and reveals who you really are. All right. Destroy brilliant. All right, let's get pressed in the hand. Good job, buddy. All right. You're gonna go straight up. Let's maybe go, let's maybe go straight up. Because I don't know if I want to have to clean the carpet. <laughs> All right, do you want real safety goggles? So, 
You were pretty good. All right. Oh boy. How many of you guys love pumpkin pie while we're on the topic? Yeah, any pumpkin pie lovers? Pecan pie or pumpkin pie? Oh boy. Oh man. Pumpkin pie. And is it what part of Georgia are you from? Is it pecan or pecan? Oh! Did it get? It hit. Addressing 
the difficulties in your life, like peer pressure, um, there must come a time when you have to stop being a recipient of that pressure and you have to confront that pressure. Everybody say, confront it. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. To confront means to challenge somebody or something face to face. How many guys have ever had a good face to face confrontation with somebody? Anybody? How many of you guys admit that makes you super uncomfortable? Confrontation, right? How many guys actually enjoy it a little bit? How many guys enjoy confrontation? Anybody like, yeah, bring it on? But that's what that's what that means. So everybody, listen up. The reason, the reason why you have to confront peer pressure during your teenage years is this. Everybody, listen up. Everybody, say, listen up. And we're having a little fun. Let's get locked back in. The reason why you have to confront peer pressure during your teenage years is because, as we mentioned last week, it simply never goes away. It doesn't matter if you're a middle schooler, a high schooler, if you're a college student, a young adult, there's always going to be some type of pressure from peers, no matter what age group that is. The environments that you're surrounding yourself in, a college environment or a work environment. If you don't learn to confront those pressureful moments, it will eventually control you. I read a quote about peer pressure, and it states this, that you will find peace not by trying to escape your problems, but you find peace by confronting them courageously. You will find peace not in denial, but in victory. And this idea of confronting and conquering your problems, it's reinforced by the word of God, of course. Romans 12, 21 tells us, don't let evil conquer you. Don't let peer pressure and evil pressure, don't let that conquer you. But you should therefore conquer evil by doing good. Romans 12, 21, if the media has that, can put those up on the screen. When you're faced with the pressure to do something evil, something bad, something that goes against what you know is right to do, you must simply combat that by doing the opposite. You must go against the flow of what that pressure is to do what is right and not to cave into the pressure. Proverbs 1 and 10 says this, my child, if a sinner, if somebody entices you, if somebody's pressuring you, you should stop. And you turn your back on them. When people try to pressure you, you've got to learn to turn them down and to turn your back on them. Not to conform to those who may be pulling you away from God. Romans 6 and 16 says this. Don't you realize, students, this is talking... Uh, perfectly, it goes in line with peer pressure. It says, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? Whatever that you choose to obey, to cave into, that's what you become slave to. That you can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can confront that sin. You can confront that pressure. You can choose to obey God in those moments which leads to righteous living. When it comes to peer pressure, if you stay passive, if you stay timid, if you become, uh, you stay reserved, you're going to become slave to it. But I challenge you guys simply tonight in this lesson to make up in your mind to confront peer pressure in Jesus' name so you can have victory over it tonight. I want to share simply three more things, three things at night that you need to confront peer pressure. And the first quality that you need to possess for confronting peer pressure is trust. Everybody say trust. 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 Trust in God. Simply having trust and faith in God in the moments that, hey, God, in this moment, if I'm going to confront this peer pressure, I have got to have a lot of faith. I have my faith and trust in you that you're going to get my back in these moments. Trust is believing that when you confront that, the pressure and the issues in your life, that God will back you up and he will take care of you. How many of you guys have ever read of uh, something called the Mariana Trench, right? In the ocean, one of the deepest places in the world, the deepest part of the world's oceans. So at sea level, 
The air pressure, pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. You don't ever really notice that or feel that pressure. Your body's adapted to that. But at the bottom of the Mariana Trench in the Western Pacific, there's seven miles of water down impose a pressure. It's about eight tons of pressure per square inch. That is an enormous amount of pressure per square inch. But it wasn't enough to stop two men. That pressure, this man named Don Walsh, Jacquez Picard, from confronting the pressure in 1960, they're the first people to explore the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. It took them four hours and 47 minutes to go all the way down, and all the way down the pressure from going down the bottom of the Mariana Trench was so great that around 30,000 feet, one of the outer plexiglass window panes cracked, shaking the entire vessel. They had a decision there. Do we trust what we are put ourselves into to continue on, or do we abandon or abort? These men, they went on. They only spent 20 minutes on the ocean floor. And it took them about three hours to go back up. But going to that depth of water, and, excuse me, facing that unbelievable pressure, it took a considerable amount of trust. Trust in that deep water submarine, the Triste. But more importantly, it takes a lot of trust in the creators of that sub, the designers and the engineers. They have put their hands, their lives in the hands of some scientist, some creator. That, that guy knew what they were doing, that this equipment, when I go down with that enormous amount of pressure around me, that is going to keep me safe. I doubt you try to go down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench at a discount sub that you bought off Amazon with a two-star rating. Probably not the best idea. There's probably not a lot of trust in that piece of equipment. But the point is, students, when it comes to confronting peer pressure, you can and you absolutely must put your trust in God Almighty. He is your creator. He is your designer. And your life can be trusted when placed in his hands. His name, the Bible says, is a strong tower that the righteous can run to and you can be safe. In those most difficult times, when you call on the name of the Lord, it is like a strong tower of protection and help to keep you from those uh, attacks. He's our Savior, our Deliverer, so we have to trust Him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and don't depend on your own understanding, but you simply seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. I want you guys to understand that your own understanding, your own emotions will tell you that in a peer pressure moment, confronting is not a great idea, right? That's typically in your flesh. That is not your first reaction in a super uncomfortable moment of pressure is to make a scene, to stand up, and to confront the pressure. That's usually the last thing that comes to mind. You're like, okay, how can I just avoid and get out of this situation without causing a scene and being too uncomfortable? That's a very difficult time. But your own understanding, that's, that's not going to, to get you through that. Your flesh will tell you to do what you want, to pursue you know, the, the safest way out. It will tell you to take the easy route, to avoid confrontation. It will tell you that the risk of rejection or being isolated from somebody you care about or a group of friends is not worth it. But understand tonight, you need to confront and your own will, your own desires with complete obedience and trust in God. Proverbs, excuse me, Psalms 9 and 10 says this. Those who know your name, Lord, they trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. So it's God, simply put, he will not abandon those who trust in him. you got to trust God. The second quality for overcoming peer pressure is tenacity. Everybody say tenacity. tenacity. Tenacity is an important quality as a Christian. It's being very determined to stand for what is right. 
To truly trust God, to truly have courage, there's got to be some tenacity in you as a Christian. There must be a little bit of a passion, a lot of passion, a Holy Ghost fire in your life. There has to be great resolve and determination that you want to please God more than anything else. You can't be passive, you know, passivity. You have to have tenacity. 1 Corinthians 2 and 2 says this, For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything else except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. That's the kind of mindset. I've forgotten everything else. In that peer pressure moment, I forget about my friends. I forget about the confrontation. I forget about all those things. And I'm instantly, I'm focused and there's this understanding about Jesus Christ, the one who died for me, the Savior, the creator of the world. And my mind is made up. You've got to have that kind of determination and not be affected by peer pressure. To not be pulled or swayed or affected by those closest to you. If you do, God will be there for you. Psalm 16, 8 says this, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. When it comes to peer pressure, some spiritual tenacity is needed, a strong desire, a great determination to make a stand for what is right. So the next thing, the third and final quality for facing peer pressure tonight is toughness. Everybody say toughness. Spiritual toughness. Having the strength, having the courage to face peer pressure. And the scripture, God's people were placed in many, many hostile, high pressure situations. You read through all the miraculous moments that happen in the Bible. Most of them were in high pressure situation and moments. But in these high pressure uh, situations, we see that God's people, they were reminded and challenged to trust in God and have some spiritual toughness to them. Deuteronomy 31.6, so I recently preached this to our church family on a Sunday, says this, so be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. He says, hey, you need to toughen up as Christians. You need to be strong. You need to be courageous. You need to have some tenacity in your life. So courage, it's, it's facing difficulty, danger, pain, and other pressures without fear. It's being brave and having strength in the face of pain or grief. As paralyzing as the fear of standing up to peer pressure may be, the Bible says that God can help free yourself of that fear. While you truly have confidence that God is going to be there for you, you can develop toughness in times of immense pressure. There's an old saying that a dog is a man's best friend, right? Man or woman. How many guys have a precious little dog? Yeah? It's all right. There's another saying that goes like this, that a diamond is a girl's best friend. <laughs> Diamonds are amazing. Uh, they are beautiful. They are expensive. Brother Zach could probably attest to that in his recent engagement in marriage. Diamonds are also supposed to be the hardest natural occurring substance on earth. There's others that are non-natural that are harder than a diamond, but a diamond is the hardest natural substance on earth. A diamond doesn't become a diamond very easily. It's a long process of carbon-bearing materials enduring immense pressure. Most diamonds are formed by extreme temperature of 2,700 degrees and great pressure that's compared to 4,000 grown men standing on your foot is the comparison of pressure. But this takes place at a great depth of around 100 miles below the Earth's surface in the mantle. The layer between the crust and the superheated core, the high pressure, it changes a molecular structure of carbon by crushing its atoms together and forcing it into a new structure. Science. Finally, diamonds are brought to the surface as a result of volcanic eruptions. 
our um, earthquakes. Other weakened materials in the earth that sustain the amount of time or pressure, they simply decay. They simply de decompose. They're destroyed under the pressure. But a diamond is created because of its internal components, because of what it's made of, the diamond survives and it thrives. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this. The temptation, students, that are in your life right now, the pressures that are in your life, they're no different from what others experience. That's a reminder that no matter what you're going through right now, no matter the pressure that you're dealing with, and sometimes you don't understand it, you feel like you're isolated in that, the Bible kind of reminds us, hey, what you're going through right now, the temptations in your life, that peer pressure, that's no different from what others experience. You're not alone in this. But God is faithful. And he will not allow the temptation, the pressure, to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So please know that if you are filled with God's spirit, if you are filled with his power and strength, you have the ability to stand against any pressure in this life. You have the ability to have strength, tenacity, and toughness. It may be difficult facing the pressure, but I want you guys to understand, it will not destroy you. It may be uncomfortable. You may feel that pressure. God didn't pri promise Christians a pressure-free life, right? More than anything, he told us there's going to be pressure. More than anything else, he told us in this life, there's going to be persecution. He said, hey, that's okay. You are going to go through that, but it's not going to destroy you. Rather, it is going to strengthen you. It's going to strengthen your faith in God. Romans 5, 3 through 4 says this, we can rejoice too for when we run into problems and trials, for we know that those moments, the trials, the problems, the peer pressure that we're talking about tonight, they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength, and it develops character in our lives. And character, it strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So students, be tough. Trust in God. Stay filled with his powerful spirit and don't give up. Don't give in. So turn to somebody next to you and say, hey, toughen up. Toughen up. As our worship team comes back, makes their way back this time, if you guys do any reading in the Old Testament, at some point you're going to come across a group of people called the Philistines. Some say the Philistines. Philistines, Philistines. How many of you have heard of the Philistines? Philistines, right? They were strong. They were a warring people, one of Israel's fiercest rivals. From the first Hebrew, Abraham, until the deportation of Judah to Babylon, the Philistines were a constant enemy of Israel. You read about many different battles and run-ins between the two nations, like Samson and Gideon and David and Goliath and many more all throughout the Old Testament. One of my favorite that relates perfectly to my message tonight about having, um, being able to confront, is what we're talking about tonight, the pressures in your life, is the story of King Saul's son, Jonathan. King Saul was gathered with about 600 men trying to figure out what to do about the immense pressure from the Philistines. But nearby, up on his hill, there was a fortified outpost on this rocky cliff with 20 or more Philistine warriors. And something had rose up into Jonathan, and instead of being crippled by the pressure and conforming to it, he decided to simply confront it. He said to his armor bearer in 1 Samuel 14 and 6, he said, let's go across to the outpost of these pagans, Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle, whether he has many warriors or only a few. What an incredible amount of faith that he had. When the Philistines saw them coming, they tried to intimidate them. That's what they specialized in. That's what Goliath did to pressure Jonathan. They mocked him, said, hey, look, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes. Come on up here, he said, we'll teach you a lesson, is what the Bible
Bible says. 20 plus Philistine warriors trying to pressure them, trying to intimidate them. Just two men. Everybody say pressure. pressure. But Jonathan decided to confront that pressure with the help of the Lord. He told his armor bearer, come on, climb right behind me. The Lord, he's going to help us defeat this pressure. They climbed up the cliff to confront the outpost. The Bible says they're standing back to back, surrounded by the Philistines, and they began to fight. Before long, some 20 Philistines were killed. Their bodies scattered, the Bible says, over a half an acre. Not only did they confront students and conquer the pressure from the Philistines, but it set off a chain reaction. It unleashed faith to the other people of Israel. The Bible says panic broke out in the army, and the Philistines were terrified, and they were the ones feeling the pressure now. All because Jonathan and his armor bearer confronted the Philistine pressure, Israel conquered the Philistines that day. And I want us all to stand together. Students, that's what God can do for you. If you will learn not to cave into the peer pressure moments in your life, but rather partner with God and simply confront 